Hi there, my name is Will and today I'm going to show you how you can manage access inside of Kestra with RBAC. RBAC, also known as role-based access control, is a great way to have fine granular control of who can access what inside of Kestra. I'm going to run you through a demo where we can set up RBAC to make sure that we've got users who can create certain workflows in a certain namespace and others who can only view them in different namespaces, which means that you can have multiple flows dependent on one another, but you can prevent users who aren't supposed to have access from being able to edit different ones. So let's jump into it. Jumping into Kestra, I'm under the IAM menu here. And as you can see, these are the three users that have access to my Kestra instance. Now I am the admin here, so I can see everything going on. Now, typically you're going to not have many people have this role. So we're gonna ignore that for now. We've also got John here, who is from the US team, and he has the developer role. And as you can see here, he has permission here to read, create, update, and delete flow secrets, the key value store, settings, templates, blueprints, executions, and namespaces. Now we can create custom roles to set this even more granular if we want. So we could say he can only create flows, but he can't, you know, create secrets or KV store, but we're gonna leave this as it is for now. And he only has access to the company.us namespace. This is important because we wanna make sure that users in the US can only access the US based workflows and the users in the EU can only access the EU namespaces. Now we've got another user here called Patrick. Now the key difference here is Patrick is a viewer. He can only see the workflows. He has no permission to write them or even execute them. So Patrick here is gonna be able to see his workflow and see that it's run and see the result of that but he won't be able to do anything beyond that. So let's have a look at this in action. So I'm currently logged in as the admin role and I can see both of the roles here successfully inside of Kestra. I can see both of the flows inside of Kestra successfully. Now, if I click onto the process data flow, we can see that here it's going to simply just take a download task, query that data and then generate an output for us. And if I click on dependencies, we can see that process data is dependent on get data from product. Now, if I click on this one, which is in the EU namespace, we can see that this one here is gonna take an input file. It's then going to upload it to an Azure data lake and it's going to be triggered when that process data flow is finished successfully and has that data already for us. And we can see that it's gonna take that data using the trigger expression here. Now, the key thing here is, and we can jump back to that namespace view to help us visualize it, is that we've got two users. We've got John, who's based in the US. Now, John is a developer, so he can edit that process data flow. He's able to go in, change it up, as well as execute it. Patrick is in the EU namespace and Patrick does not have any edit roles. In fact, he can only view the workflow, which means he can't even execute it, which means that Patrick is actually dependent on the US team executing his workflow so that he can get the results. This is really useful if you want to prevent anyone from being able to come in here, like I can as an admin, press execute, choose any file you want and upload it. This will only upload files when other workflows that have generated the correct format are finished and they will trigger this, which means that you can validate that this isn't gonna be used incorrectly. Now I'm gonna impersonate both of those roles and see what they see to show you the access that they have on these workflows. First of all, I'm gonna impersonate John. Now when I impersonate John here, we can see that he can only see the process data flow. And when I go to namespaces, they again, he can only see that US namespace, specifically the product one. Now, if I click on here and go to our flow, I can have that edit button available to me and I can come in here and edit things and I can say, you know, whatever I want. I can add a little full stop there if I want and I can see that full stop is now there in my description. So I can definitely edit. Now, if I execute this flow, we can see that it's going to run successfully. It's gonna download our data and then query it. Now, if I go back to the edit view for a second, we can see that it does have a dependency like we did as the admin view, but because John doesn't have permission to see that other workflow, John will not know what workflow is going to be triggered based on this one finishing. So this stops John from being able to see what's happening with the data where he doesn't have permission, but it does tell him that it is used and so therefore his workflow is important and that he shouldn't go modifying it crazily because something else depends on it. 
Now, if I go to executions, we can see only the process data flow has executed, but we can be pretty certain that the other one in the EU namespace has executed because this one was successful. So now I'm going to go and impersonate Patrick, the viewer, and we'll be able to see the end result of this process data flow starting, finishing, and triggering the next one. So now I'm gonna head over to users here and now I'm gonna impersonate Patrick. Now here I can quickly see that I can only see the get data from product flow and under namespaces, again, only the EU namespaces. So we can be pretty happy that we've set up our back correctly. Now, if I go to that flow inside of our namespace, I have no edit button or execution button. So I cannot do anything but view. If I go to the editor, I cannot type because it's in read only. So I can clearly see here what it needs. I know that it needs an input. I know that it's gonna to upload to Azure's data lake here and it's gonna be triggered when process data in the company.us.product namespace has finished. So based on this, I can go to the US product team and say, hey, this is all ready, just you know, send it a work, a CSV file as an input and away you go. And if we go to that dependencies view, again, we're seeing the reverse of what we saw earlier. We can see that we need a workflow to start us, but we can't see what that is. This can be really helpful if you want to be able to have a workflow that uploads files, but you don't want anyone to manually execute it. You only want previous workflows that have put data in the correct format to be able to upload it. Now, because Patrick has view permissions here, I can click on executions and see that in fact, this was triggered successfully. I can see the input data here, and I can see that that has come from our trigger as well. I can see here that the input data has arrived successfully from our parent flow here, and I can see that it's come from the process data. And we can also head over to Azure here and see that our CSV file was successfully uploaded to confirm that this worked successfully but we can also go to our Gantt view and see that it was successful or the topology view as well to see that this has all worked as we would expect. And we can view a few outputs as well here from the file. Now I can jump back into my admin role here and create a new user that has different permissions again. Now, if I head over to users here, I can see that I can press the invite button here. I can type in a username. So here I'm adding a new user called Pamela. Now here I can add a view permission to see that US product team, but I can also give them developer permissions to that EU marketing team. So at the moment, no one has access other than the admin for EU. So we can now set it so that they can see both which is important because if they're developing it for the EU marketing team and they've got a flow trigger set up for the product team in the US, it's important that they can see what they would expect it to produce. So now I can press invite here and it's gonna give me a URL here that they can use to set this up. Now, if I open this up in a new tab, you'll see that it's gonna ask me to uh, add their name in here. So now I'm logged in here as Pamela. And if I head over to namespaces, we can see that Pamela can see both of the different namespaces that we had earlier. But if I go to product, we can see that Pamela can only view. So Pamela can come in here and see, this is how the US team are processing the data. But then if I go back to the EU one, I can see that they now have edit permissions. So here they can come in here and edit it, they can execute it and so on. So it gives you lots of flexibility to be able to give people certain access to some namespaces, but completely different access to other namespaces. Hopefully that gives you a good overview of how RBAC works inside of Kestra to give you different access to different users in your instance. RBAC can be really powerful, especially when you've got multiple namespaces with different flows that depend on one another, but you wanna make sure that people can't just execute them by random, you wanna make sure that there is proper process in place to make sure things run as expected. Let us know in the comments below how you're gonna use RBAC in your Kestra instance and make sure to join our Slack community where you can discuss with us further.